last time on Lobug Garage, I got the Jeep ready to race, but I still had to get to the race a few hundred miles away. Now I've got plates in this Jeep, but there's no way I'm driving it to Tucson. At this event, they let you camp on the track, so I want to take this. Now this bus is already set up with a receiver and a flat four connector, so we're ready to go for towing. I do have a car trailer, but that's my backup plan. I think I may have a better idea. There are a few unknowns in this front suspension. I do have new tires here. If I flat tow it, I test out all this stuff and see if it works on the road there, before I'm on the track. That means I need to make a weight amount of tow bar to this chassis. Got the two brackets bolted on to my frame stubs there, and I want them to go straight. Now, I need them to go this way, but I'm not going to bend them this way. Because if I do, it's going to bend at that bolt, and that's going to make those threads a lot weaker. I want it to bend out here. So I'm going to bend them this way, then flip them over. You can see the mark where it bent. Now, pop these here. And that actually looks pretty straight. 16 and 5 eighths on the inside. Uh, 16 and 9 sixteenths. Close enough. Now, I'm going to make a brace out of this tubing. And I want to take those brackets I just made and actually run them straight through because I don't want to cut and have weld splices. That means I need rectangular holes. Rectangular holes are a little tricky. Let me show you on this one what I did. First, I'm going to drill out a big chunk of it. I'm using this long step drill because I'm going to go through the other wall too. Now we flip it over. We got those two holes I made in the other side. We're gonna enlarge those. I'm using the holes I drilled on the back side to make a box where I'm gonna cut that out. Now I'm gonna cut on those lines, but I can't cut all the way through because of the diameter of this blade. That's gonna score it. Now even though this doesn't cut through, it's weakened enough, I can just start grabbing pieces and snapping them off with a pair of pliers. Like that. You end up taking out the chunk with reasonably square corners, and the hole's not too bad. For what I'm doing, I'm gonna weld around it, so this is fine. You can clean it up with a file if you needed it better. I trimmed off the end to about where I think I need it. And so now, we're gonna slip this brace over these brackets. And now, when I weld around here, this isn't doing much of anything as far as strength and pulling. This piece is working straight through to the bolts to the frame rail bits. Took a piece of flat bar, one quarter by one and a half, cut it into some sections, popped a hole in it, and tweaked the end. I can make a end cap and put these things in double shear. So I'm going to use a piece of threaded rod to align the whole thing. I can sneak a drill bit right here, and I can get one bolt in this outer tab too. Those are probably plenty strong, this is extra. This hole thinned out the wall a bit. I didn't like how thin that was. Also, this gap was a little big. I added a big washer by welding it right across the thin area, so that built up this material quite a bit and took up this gap some. When you weld, things wiggle. So I'm gonna run a reamer through and make sure everything's still in line. Perfect. That's what I'm looking for. And not wobbly at all. I figure I should put the name of the channel on the car, just in case people want to see how this abomination happened. I'm real bad at putting on graphics. I'm going to try to do it a little better this time. Got some pieces of tape to guide me on the bottom. A little soap and water to try to make it move around. That looks straight from back there. Hopefully I got it. Oh yeah, this is going badly. 
Oh, hey. Not as bad as I expected. This one's a bit of an experiment. We'll see how it works. Made up a squeegee out of the old stirring stick I used to mix the paint. See if that helps. Got my tow bar attached, and I'm pretty happy with this. I think that's going to work out well. You may notice the moon coming up over there. I don't think I'm leaving today. But it's still just Thursday. I was going to give myself an extra day for things to go wrong on the road, but we're going to assume that's all going to work fine and have everything go wrong here tonight. So now the new plan is leaving first thing in the morning. Next day to work on the taillights. Now I got Nylite to send me one of their trailer harnesses, standard four pin connector with a bunch of wire. So we'll just run that right through and it should go fine. Got my test rig battery set up and I got to check what that light does. That looks kind of dim. I bet that's running. Oh yeah, that's brake and running. Blue is running lights. Pinkish, I guess, is brake lights. That's easy. And that'll be my signal light too. The Jeeps have this channel that go the entire length so I can run the wires in there. They'll be out of the way. It's now quarter of 10 on Thursday. I'm about to do a test run and see how it tows. And that'll determine whether or not I can do this or if I need to hook up the trailer. I'll be in the tow vehicle. You guys keep an eye on this stuff back here. I figured if I could tow it with another Grand Cherokee that wasn't much heavier, it would definitely move easy behind the bus. It seemed to follow along good enough. So it was time to throw some fuel in the Jeep so it was ready to go and then go back and hook it up. Now this bus had been sitting for almost 20 years before I drove it back from Connecticut. Even though it has a trailer plug, I don't know if it actually works. I probably should find that out. I also got a seven way round plug and tester from Nylite. With a complete disregard to the unboxing video I was expected to do, I started using them. I figured I'd check the connector here. And we've got nothing on the bus. So, that means we have a problem. It's one of those electronic converter boxes that almost always goes bad immediately. Let's see what we can do with this. We got power going in. Yeah, it's just the converter box. The tricky part is the signal and brake light, because this uses two separate lights. We gotta make them work on one. This is my most recent and best signal converter box. That clamp has to stay right there in order for it to work. Otherwise, it loses one of the signal lights. I don't think it's worth stealing this one. Getting rid of this malfunctioning converter box by using the diode trick. It's close to midnight, and I'm stealing parts out of a car in the middle of a driveway by flashlight. Luckily, it's my driveway and my car. But no one driving by seems to care. Guess this might be considered normal around here. I think I used some one-way diodes in this Jeep. Hopefully I can find them. Oh, here we go. I'll replace them later. Probably. Gets me going tonight. At this point, I don't really care. I gotta get this thing rolling tomorrow. Ever notice, the later it gets, the more things don't fit right. I'll worry about this later. I'm gonna steal these parts and go. The basic problem here is this bus has separate turn signal and brake lights. And these four wire plugs are meant for lights that do both braking and signal with the same bulb. So you have to sort out the signals. Basically what I have here is a diode that has two inputs and one out. So anything going in goes out, but it doesn't backfeed. If you turn on the signal lights, they don't go through the brake wire and try to make the other signal blink. Now I've shown you guys this one before, and I've had people complain about it. Because the issue is, you can signal, you can brake. If you try to signal and brake at the same time, the brake lights take over. Personally, I have no problem with that, because braking is what I want people to know I'm doing. I'm more concerned with people not rear-ending me than knowing which way I'm going, because I'm not going to be moving fast with this thing. I'm going to tidy all this up, maybe wrap some electrical tape around the bare wires sticking out, and I think we're ready. We have lights again. Or for the first time. I don't know. We have lights. I, um, we have lights.
So it's around 1 a.m. I decided it would be a good idea to remove the drive shaft. I don't know if that transmission actually uh, oils just by spinning or needs the engine running. And I don't want to destroy the transmission on the drive. So I'm going to pop off this drive shaft. That way only the rear end spins. Got a hose clamp. I'm going to put this around the U-joint caps. Make sure everything stays together. I'm trying to tie this drive shaft off to the side because I'm worried this rear end is going to move up and down and I can't go up any higher. I found a nut plate that had a few threads in it. That one looks promising. I'm just going to thread a bolt in from the back side here. A little extra wire, a little extra tape. Looks like this will hold together. The next morning, after several hours of sleep, we were rolling out. I didn't even notice the Jeep was back there. It pulled it like nothing. It seemed to track fine. Got about 20 miles over here. I checked the bearings. They were warm, so I popped the cover off. There is grease there. It's a little old, but it still moves around. So we're going to just keep an eye on this and keep rolling. We're cruising right along here. Got a burrito in the cup holder. I can see the teeth through the backup camera. Doing it about 54, 55 miles an hour or so. Looks like we're in good shape. Arizona. Temperature's doing fantastic. Transmission is great. The Jeep is still there. That seems to be towing fine. We're cruising along. Here comes an oncoming train. Let's see how long it takes to go by. Over a minute and a half. There's the end of the train, finally. We're about to hit a nice long mountain pass. The temperature's around 195 right now. Transmission looks real good, though. Texas Canyon. A lot of flowers here. We're at the summit here. Not going too much slower than most traffic. And that's it. We're off the gas. Temperature's just under 210. But that's going to drop real fast now they're going downhill. After a long day of driving, we made it to the raceway. There's this timing stand, and they are pretty packed already. The air conditioner worked for almost all day, and then popped a breaker, and then did it again, and then did it again, and then did it again, and right now we have no AC. I just hooked it up to the most convenient circuit, which is this one, which is 15 amps. I wonder if the heat from traveling all day is making that breaker pop easy. So I'm going to move it over to this one right here, which is 30 amps, which means I need to hook it up to this. So I need to hook the wires to that kind of plug. And luckily, under here, we have all sorts of plugs and cords and adapters and things. I'm gonna make an adapter to fix your air conditioner before you even check in. So a little delay. Got some splicing happening. Apparently the problem with the breaker popping all the time wasn't the breaker, it was the generator. It was down to 90 something volts. So I took it apart a little bit I didn't actually have to take this one apart. It was flopping loose. This is the voltage regulator. And it's wore a hole in its capacitor here. I'm gonna take an attempt at putting some tape around that and see what happens. I worked on the generator the rest of the evening, but I met a lot of nice people that stopped by to say hi. Looks like there's no salvaging that voltage regulator. I need to replace it. Yeah, I don't have one. So we're stuck with absolutely no air conditioning, but that's okay right now because it's morning and it's cool. So now I got to get the Jeep back together, get that drive shaft back on, and try to make it through tech. Luckily, they parked us off in the weeds with a nice smooth surface to lay on while I work on the Jeep. That'll make it better. The drive shaft stayed secure while we were traveling, so that's a good thing. The drive shaft's going in. I pulled out my trailer harness. Just going to tie up the excess here and get it out of the way. I almost passed tech inspection. The only thing they didn't like was my battery disconnect 
didn't kill the engine. Easy fix, we're just gonna disconnect the alternator. I taped the pigtail to a rubber hose so it can't touch anything, but I can hook it back up if I need to charge the battery when I'm not racing. Let's see what happens. The initial advance is a little high. It's hard to start. We're running. Kills it. Let's try going through again. I passed this time, so it's legal. Let's go try it out. If you've never done an event like this before, one thing you may not realize is you spend a lot of time in staging lanes, moving a little at a time, but mostly idling. Temperature's staying real good, no problems there. Plenty of oil pressure, you are idling. But eventually, sometimes an hour later, you make your way to the starting line, and then you get your turn to go. And that's where I made my first mistake. I almost stalled at taking off the line lock. And then, it didn't want to run right. Despite all that, it's the fastest that Jeep ever went. A 1422 at 102.79 miles an hour. Made one pass, no problem. It was running a little rough, but it cleared out. I'm not sure if it's gonna get worse, so I think I'm just gonna wait for the Battle of the Beaters while it's still working, so I don't break it in the meantime. Since we're out in the tall grass, I don't wanna start a grass fire. Found a nice safe place to do some grilling. This seems totally fine. We've got food and Nothing caught on fire, so that's a bonus. After lunch, I got to check out some of the vehicles at the event. There are all sorts of things. And then there's the burnout pit. Of course, there's racing going on in the background almost the entire time. And then it was time to be judged by David Freiberger and Steve Dulcich to see if your car was worthless enough to enter the Battle of the Beaters. Okay. I know y'all remember this car from years past. Instead of charging a drive shaft, it was easier for him to shoot the vehicle to match the drive shaft he already had. So you move the suspension out of the way of the headers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Real man of genius. <laughs> I gotta see this for myself. But here's the thing, I know this guy and he's legit. Low luck, mixed up work, it's pretty much in the spirit of road kills. You're absolutely it with this thing of you. <laughs> this is one of the greatest vehicles actually in the history of this whole event because of the ingenuity. Once again, shortens the body to match the drive shaft he already had, and then he wanted to put the headers on and he didn't clear the suspension, so he moved the suspension out of the way. Absolute genius. And with that, I was in, officially entering the Battle of the Beaters. I didn't want to stall it this time, so I did a small burnout.
then I saw the guy I was racing. So I figured I did okay. And this was my highest speed ever, over 105. And I was going to round two. And here's where I started making a lot of mistakes. I had trouble staging because the front wheels are way further than I expected. The lights took forever to go on. And then, I used way too much RPM to launch. How do you like that one? That was a 2 to 5 shift. Eventually I started catching up, but it was too little too late. My own fault, Mr. Shift, but I can improve, so I know the car is more in it. Even though that radiator is way narrower than the stock one, it's working great. It's been running nice and cool the whole time. Even though the details of the weekend didn't go as planned, the fundamentals were there. The Jeep was solid, drove great, and was very reliable. I blame the distributor for the rough running. The bus got us there, towed fine, and my family had an adventure we'll remember for years to come. I think we're all packed up, and it's time to head out. Drive shaft's off again, we're hooked back to the bus, the lights seem to work, and because it's nighttime, it's not 100 degrees. So this seems like a good time to drive. We're gonna start rolling. Back in New Mexico. This is what my GPS speedometer normally looks like. For some reason, it looks flickery on camera during the day. I'm back home, but that means I have a bunch of big wins. First, all the modifications I did to this car held up. Over hundreds and hundreds of miles of bouncy roads, that stayed together and looks fine. Not only did it hold together, but it went faster than it ever did before. Over 105 miles an hour in the quarter mile. And for something made of scrap parts and rusty metal, I think that's pretty good. The other big win is that bus. It towed this thing all the way to Tucson and back. No problem with the bus drivetrain at all. No problem towing. No problem overheating. The only issue I had was the generator. And I'm going to count that as a win too, because now I'm inspired to dig into that bus again and keep working on it. I'm going to dig into the electrical system next, get the 110 stuff working with a backup. As far as the race went, I want to do a little work on the car. I want to replace that distributor completely and get rid of it because I still don't like it. And I made some mistakes driving. And I'm also going to count that as a win too. Because I've only been the track maybe a dozen times. I've learned a bit. And I think I'll do better next time. Also, having something wrong with the car means I get to do more work on it. And that's a lot of fun. I hope you guys are having fun too. And we'll see you next time. Now that I know this bus does a great job towing, I'm going to go ahead and install this trailer connector with its mounting bracket so I can use my car trailer when I want to. Mm. Apparently that was full of water. Guess I need drain holes in the hit. Nothing like an unexpected surprise of uh, liquid. Brackets in, attach the additional ground, plugs in, it's hooked up to the flat four connector so I can unplug it if I want the flat four. I get the extra wires here, so if I do need a brake controller, I can hook it up easy. And I drilled drain holes on either side of this tube so it won't build up water again. Got my hazard lights on. Plug in our tester here. The tester's showing us everything is working fine. So we're ready to go. I wanted to find out how much this thing weighed. So I had it weighed, even with the tow bar and everything, 2,900 pounds. So that's not bad. 